Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. Prince Harry and Meghan has kicked off the Invictus Games Whistler 2025 One Year to Go event at the top of Whistler Blackcomb. The couple met with competitors from around the world who are part of the Participating Nations training camp. Prince Harry even joined in on the fun, trying out one of the events for the 2025 Games. How adorable does Meghan look? She looks relaxed, hydrated, those loose curls, the minimal makeup, chef's kiss. And for the fashion girls, Megan's outfit has already been fully identified. According to what Megan wore, Megan was donning a Calvin Klein jacket, Victoria Beckham top, cream jeans, Burberry hat, and sorrel boots. Happy hunting! Y'all, <laughs> mother and daddy, oh wait a minute, that's Prince? freaking Harry have made it to Vancouver to commemorate the one year to go to the Winter Invictus Games over there in Vancouver, Canada. Girl, why do you make something so simple look so damn good? Can you please drop the skin routine? Can you please drop the makeup line already? Like, can you please stop stepping on our necks like this? I'm pretty sure everything in this photo that she has on is about to sell out if it hasn't already. But damn, Mother and Daddy Sussex look hella good. Have a great day. After enjoying the activities of day one, Harry and Meghan were greeted to cheers from a crowd of well-wishers as they left. And I've already seen some of the bitter Bettys on social media complaining about Meghan holding her husband's hand. As if Harry isn't seeking out her hand to hold. As if Harry isn't putting his arm around his wife. As if he's not putting a supportive hand behind her back as she walks around in places with snow and possible ice. And to those people I say, seriously, go outside and touch some grass. Have you never been loved before? Why are you so triggered by Megan holding her husband's hand? Get a life. And I must say, I've really been enjoying the frequent updates from the new Sussex.com website. From the announcement of Prince Harry presenting the NFL honor for Man of the Year, to the latest announcement of Megan's Eliminata deal, and now to Prince Harry and Meghan's trip to Vancouver for the one year to go celebrations. And speaking of updates, the Sussex.com website also gave us an update of Prince Harry and Meghan touring the Squamish Lillawatt Cultural Center with Youth Ambassadors Chief Nelson and Wilson Williams. A reception at the center followed where artists who created the Invictus Games Vancouver Whistler 2025 logo debuted their work. I'm telling you, this Sussex.com website has been giving us the deets in, well, almost real time. Also, did you guys see the post that shared some of the press that was waiting to capture moments of Harry and Meghan? So there was press from Canada, there was press from the US, and there was press from the UK. Why would the UK be there? For the past four years, they've been trying to tell us that Harry and Meghan are the worst of the worst, they're completely irrelevant, Yet you fly all the way from the UK just to catch glimpses of Harry and Meghan minding their business, attending to their work that is non-taxpayer funded. The Spare and his American biracial wife that you guys ostracized and ran out of that country. And look at you. Every single event, every chance you get, y'all are flying over here camped out in lobbies, out here in the cold, trying to get glimpses of Harry and Meghan. You can't make this up. <laughs> you really can't. It's Harry or Prince William? Harry. Do you want Harry and Meghan back in England? No. No, why? Because I think that here um, they have a lot, a lot of pressure from their family and I think maybe they're just happier somewhere else. Guys, do you want Prince Harry and Meghan to come back to England? Yeah, why not? Why yeah, not? they're fun. Young people love them, I think. People are way too much in his business, I think. Right. I'm gonna let the man be a father, let the man live. Last time I'm back though. Okay, so back and with privacy. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, do you want Harry and Meghan back in England? Yes. Yes, why? Love them. You love them? What yeah. about you? Yeah, love them. William. 
darling, take it from me. And I know you won't because you're your father's son. But if you had any sense, and God knows you ought to by now, dear heart, you'd take it on the chin like the prince you are and apologize to your brother. I know, I know you think it's he who should apologize. But I need you, William, to focus on how little that matters anymore. What sort of king do you imagine you're going to be? in the 21st century, if you're not on speaking terms with the people's prince. I'll tell you what kind, the besieged kind. You'll be barricaded in your castle while those ghastly clowns in Westminster pillage Britain and Fleet Street convinces the poor people it's your fault and you know where that leads. Harry will be gallivanting around with the entire Commonwealth in his pocket and you, darling, at the rate you're going, you'll be lucky to hang on to the crown. I'm sorry, but you know it's true. And who else is going to tell you? Because let's face it, your father's entirely lost control of the narrative, hasn't he? As for that minx you married, I do declare I half think she's the root of the problem. Glad to hear she's home and recovering, by the way, from whatever it was. But not one for competition, is she? Pulled rank on the newcomer, then found she couldn't pull focus. It looks bad, William. It reeks. It looks so bad that any fool could see you and Catherine need to put aside whatever personal objections you have to that lovely girl and meet the challenges of Harry's book. You know he has a point, darling, and half the kingdom may be backing you, but it's not the larger half. It's up to you, William, to mend this breach. And if not for the sake of the kingdom, then do it to save your own honor. Morning, straight into it. Come at me if you want. I don't care more. BS from the Kensington Palace flunkies who are absolutely doing their nuts about lots of things, including a website, a new podcast deal. Interesting that Harry and Meghan are forging their own money and careers um, overseas. And what else? I have absolutely no idea. But advice to Kensington Palace, rather than kind of leaking this stuff to the Daily Mail, why don't you actually make great news from the existing royals family? Because remember, Harry and Meghan actually left the family as working royals. Why don't you focus on what the working royals are actually doing rather than things like this? And of course, the answer to that, the quick answer to that is... Kensington Palace can't focus on what the working royals are doing because they're not actually doing a lot and haven't done a lot since the beginning of December. Anyway, can King Charles rescind the titles? Well, firstly, it would be petty because the agreement was when these two left as working royals, they'd keep the titles. So they've signed an agreement, like when you get divorced or whatever, once you've signed it, it's a bit of a bad thing to try and undo it right and change that agreement. Secondly, only the UK Parliament can do this. King's Char King Charles can ask, but it's only the UK Parliament, an elected bunch of idiots, that can do this. Kensington Palace... Focus on the stuff you should be doing. Let these two get on with whatever they want to do. As I drink the tears of Kensington Palace royal flunkies and analyse this latest bit of genius from the Daily Mail. This is, on a serious note, this has clearly been leaked by Kensington Palace, right? Hence the tears. They're all crying into tiny cups like this. Let's drink their tears. Clearly been leaked. Again, moaning, moaning, moaning about the exploits of Meghan and Harry because there's nothing positive to point, about, point to and talk about in the UK royal family activity. So does this really betray their agreement with the late Queen? It doesn't actually. It's not even true. So they agreed to be non-working royals to maintain their titles and for their children to have titles. Obviously, as non-working royals, they are not on the payroll. They have to go out and earn their own money to stay alive. And I'll tell you, I'm a technology contractor. If I don't work, I don't get paid. I can't be ill or, or I don't get paid. Believe me, if you've got no guaranteed income, you have to work to be paid. And that's exactly what Harry and Meghan are doing at the moment. Looking after their family, 
earning money, spreading a bit of love and trying to work out the direction of what they should be doing in the future. There's no breaking of the agreement. They're doing good. Seems like they've got a happy life. I think the UK royal family in Kensington Palace need to actually do something positive themselves and maybe talk about themselves rather than comparing themselves to some other people. Have a good evening. Jonathan, thank you very much for joining me again on the show. Great to speak to you. Um, is this new website tacky or savvy? Savvy, definitely savvy. I don't know why you think it was tacky. It's a website promoting themselves. When you send out your biography to get new work, you present yourself in the best possible light, light as anybody does, anybody watching this programme right now. Jonathan, you know we're talking about the use of the royal ties, the use of the royal crest, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, when they've, uh, well, abandoned their duties, really, to the royal family, haven't they? That's a whole separate issue with this decision to step down. This conversation is not about that. This conversation is about how they go forward. That is his name, Prince Harry. You can't say to someone, you're given a name at birth and it's now been taken away from you. He is Prince Harry. That's a fact. He is the son of the king. So you're a prince by definition. Whether you choose to work as a prince or not, you're still a prince. Their children were given the title of prince and princess. If he, if, he, if he wants to be a prince, he had every opportunity to be a prince, but I'm sorry, being a prince in this country doesn't mean you just get to go around in a golden carriage. It means you have to go to that's, a rainy that, shopping centre in the East Midlands and open and cut a ribbon and stand there in the drizzle and take your duty. But he doesn't want to do that. He wants to sun himself in California. He wants to keep the title prince without standing there at the old people's home and shaking people's hands and, and doing all of the duties that royals are supposed to do. Don't you see the difference there? Of course I see the difference. I'm not stupid, but thank you for suggesting it. Um, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, he is not taking any money from the British government. He's not taking any money from the British taxpayer. He's not taking any public money whatsoever. It's, if someone has a name by birth because their parents are a certain name, or someone gets married and is married to someone for a long while and then gets divorced from them, I don't think it's reasonable to say they then can't keep using that surname. He was born a member of the royal family. Yes, oh, but this isn't just a family, it's a firm. It's often referred to as a firm. Also, and firms, of course, have uh, various logos that are associated. His crest has a crown on it. Uh, well, how many people's family as, crests as, have as crowns you, on them? First of all, I think you just said it was Meghan's crest, not his crest. He was, she was given that crest by her, her late um, grandmother-in-law. She's been given that crest. I don't think you could, you're not given given the crest and then taken away. She was gifted that crest by her ex-grandmother. I think if one of us had a famous surname that granted us certain privileges and then our son or daughter decided to disown us and run away and slag off our family, I wouldn't be very happy for them to make commercial gain, for my mm. son or daughter to make commercial gain out of my name. Not that that will ever happen, but thank you very much, Jonathan Shallot. Always great to speak to you, talent and PR you. manager. I can see Jonathan's point. Okay, we got to talk about the coat Meghan Markle wore tonight for a tour and reception at the Squamish Lil Watt Cultural Center in Canada. Now, if you've seen any of my royal fashion videos, you know I'm a big believer that royals dress with intention. Usually, but not always, the clothing they wear has some sort of significance or meaning. And in the case of this coat, and really just like the whole vibe, it very much feels like a nod to the beginning of their relationship. So first of all, they're in Canada where Megan was living and filming suits when their relationship began. And where did this couple make their relationship debut? At the 2017 Invictus Games in Toronto, Canada. And where did Megan move to when she left Canada? Kensington Palace. And what's the name of this coat? Kensington from the California brand Doen. So to me, it very much feels like this coat is not only a nod to the beginning of their relationship when they lived at Kensington Palace, but also to where they put their roots down. California. And then it's just even more fitting that they're at an Invictus Games event. Now, I'm sure this could be interpreted in several different ways, but I'm a Libra. It's Valentine's Day, and I'm choosing to see the romance of it. Now, let's talk about the event for a minute. Now, as mentioned earlier, they got a tour and went to a reception at the Squamish Lil Watt Cultural Center. And here they are getting a tour from two of the youth ambassadors. Now, with the Invictus Games being in Canada, it's also being held in partnership with the First Nations. You can pause to read this quote from the Invictus Games website. And at tonight's reception, the artist who created the logo for the 2025 Invictus Games debuted their artwork. 
Here's the logo. Now this is significant because it marks the first time all four First Nations have come together to collaborate on a piece of art. In a statement shared on Sussex.com, they said the evening and presentation were extremely meaningful and that Invictus Games 2025 and the couple could not be more proud to share the artist's piece with the world. They added they recognized the significance of the First Nations communities welcoming the Invictus Games onto their sacred land and are thankful for the warmth and hospitality. And personally, I love everything about this. I love the collaboration. I love the respect for the First Nations. I love the symbolism of her fit. And I'm excited to see what the next few days have in store for them. Girl, you back out here doing what you do best. Y'all already know what I'm about to say. She out here doing what? Stepping on our necks in the most natural, subtle way possible. Like, girl. Then on top of that, Archetypes is back. My girl is back podcasting, y'all. I can't wait to hear this beautiful voice again. Because you know it did do very well on Spotify, might I add. But 2024 just started. You got Mama Sussex out here podcasting again. And you got Daddy Sussex out here winning his court case. And they've updated the website on Sussex.com. See what happens when you mind your business, sip your tea, or in Mama Sussex's case, drink her clever coffee, and do good. Some people over there on Saltine Island might need to take a few notes. <laughs> but 2024 is our favorite couple's year, and the year just started. Like, dang, can you please pass some of that good fortune over here? Y'all have a good day. I went back to the cesspit that is Twitter, and I came across this site um, because of obviously Meghan Markle is just going to deal with uh, a new podcast company, and you know, same old hate and hate. And I saw this one particular tweet, it just like five minutes ago, loads of hashtags. So I went into the account, that account was opened in October 2023, so it's quite recent. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of tweets just basically hating on Megan. It's, it's just so weird to see. So this is how you get trending topics of Meghan Markle is a narcissist, Meghan Markle is a grifter. And, you know, some really, really vile things. I mean, this is just, um, I think, just today. But I don't know how many tweets are from today of sharing and um, tweeting new, you know, photos and stuff. But it's just incessant. It's just, I mean, I'm guessing this is a bot. But they're also sharing other accounts that are like hate accounts. So, you know when there is a, ho a horrible hashtag of Meghan Mark in Trendle, it's because of these com the, the, these people. It's just awful. Can you, I, I'm not surprised she just wants to get away from this. So when people say, oh, there are so many people who hate Meghan, I don't actually believe that. I just believe there is a core group of people who are just awful and evil. And for some reason, she's living rent-free in their head and they just have to say awful and horrible things about her. And that becomes trending topics because of the way that they do it. Um, you know, Harry decided to take her away from the family because the family did nothing to, to help this situation. Remember, I've said before, I'm not a fan of the royal family. I don't care about these people. But what I do care is about um, how this hate campaign was not stopped. How, in a sense, it was encouraged. It's just... It's a shame that we live in a society where this is okay when you have other members of the royal family who have done worse things um, but for some reason this just got ev up everyone's back. Oof. Stars, Harry and Meghan's latest website has folks feeling some kind of way but do they remember that back in October of 2020 Prince William and Kate Middleton took control of two companies set up to protect and monetize their intellectual property rights as future king. And Will took a more hands-on approach to his financial affairs. Yes. So there's clear precedent. And once again, it's a tale of two heirs. 
it's okay when Will does it with Kate, but it's a problem when Harry does it with Meg. Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, both 38 at the time, took control of two companies. The couple became owners of APL Anglesey and C.E. Strathern in that week during October 2020, and the websites and the paperwork enabled them to sell items and to take action against products that exploited their image in a harmful way. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have taken control of two companies which were formed to protect their brand and intellectual property rights. Prince William and Kate, both 38, became the registered persons with significant control and therefore the beneficial Owners this week of the limited companies called APL Anglesey and CE Strathern, which were set up in 2012, get it, 2012 and 2013, respectively. The firms set up in each of their names enabled the couple to sell officially endorsed licensed products and take action against anyone selling items that could harm their image, right? Just like on the TikTok shop. If you're not the copyright holder for, you know, Donald Duck or Bugs Bunny or, you know, Minnie Mouse, you can't sell products with those images. Similarly, Will and Kate were like, nah, we're going to license our own names and images and profit off of it. Not y'all. Previously, the shareholders were trusted royal aides who represented the interests. Get it? Money. Of the couple. And this is the first time that Prince William and Kate have been registered as owners of businesses with a potential commercial role. Right? Keep the paperwork. The companies have never traded and have always filed dormant company accounts, although their existence means they could be called upon to carry out work for them in the future and earn for them in the future. Is the lack of earning a product of laziness, a lack of inspiration, or are people not clamoring to have tea towels and tins of black breakfast tea with their faces on them like which is it a lack of supply or a lack of demand the move reflects speculation that William is gradually growing into his role (laughs) still as a future monarch and exerting greater hands-on control over his financial and personal affairs wow how can that be when there's no earning How are you exerting control and doing business if there is no business? If you're not raising funds for charity and you're not selling licensed merch, then what exactly is this paperwork for? Is that, you know, just an exercise, you know, like cross a little X on the dotted line and then call yourself a businessman? Victor on the Young and the Restless does more real business than Will and Kate. It follows a move in August last year when Prince William and Kate were registered as persons with significant control in the company behind their charity, the Royal Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Companies house records, which were updated today, do not specify if the company are shareholders of APL Anglesey or C.E. Stathern, but specify that they each have significant influence or control over their respective companies. It follows a move in August last year when Prince William and Kate were registered as persons with significant control in the company behind their charity, the Royal Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. APL Anglesey was set up to represent Prince William's interests in October 2012, taking its title from the initials of his middle names, Arthur Philip Lewis and the Welsh Island, where he and Kate lived after they were married. Wow! Yet another renovated residence. Owned by the royal family, but paid for by the people. Kate's company, C.E. Strathern, was formed in November 2013 using the initials of her names, Catherine Elizabeth, and her Scottish title of Countess of Strathern, awarded by the Queen. 
So, you know, they're looking for a cute coin, maybe, potentially, perhaps, if they're not too busy or tired, you know. So there's definitely precedence and paperwork that anyone can inspect. The formation of the companies made headlines at the time with commentators suggesting that it was a move more associated with celebrities such as David and Victoria Beckham. Royals, including the Queen and Prince Charles, have already have their own ranges of merchandise. <laughs> Are you buying it? The profits from the Prince's Range Highgrove go to charity while Buckingham Palace's funds the Royal Collection, Art, and Antiques held in trust on behalf of the nation. The paperwork named Prince William as being the Duke of Cambridge, William Arthur Philip Lewis Windsor, <laughs> as well as recording his nationality as British and saying his country or state of usual residence was England. Do you really need that many names? You know, when you think of a Rihanna or a Madonna or Elvis, that's all you need. Two syllables and you're done. Similar details were registered for Kate with her company, naming her the as the Duchess of Cambridge, Catherine Elizabeth Cambridge. Prince Harry also had a dormant company called Tsebe, the name of an African antelope set up in October 2012. Company's house records show that Clara Pierce also stepped down as a person with significant control of Tsebe on Wednesday, but no paperwork has been filed to say who currently owns the company. Prince Harry remains a director of the company behind his and wife Meghan Markle's charity, which was formerly known as Sussex Royal, the foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The foundation was formed last year after the couple formally split their charity activities away from the Royal Foundation, which they previously shared with Prince William and Kate. The Sussex Foundation was put into liquidation in July and its name was changed to the MWX Foundation in August following Prince Harry and Meghan's split from the firm. The foundation is listed as being the owner of a separate company called MWX Trading. Kensington Palace has been approached for comment about the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's takeover of their companies. Royal sources previously described the formation of the companies as a sensible thing to protect the couple's rights, saying the firms would only be used on special occasions and any money raised would go to charity. A Kensington Palace spokesman previously said APL Anglesey and C.E. Strathern have been set up to house the intellectual property rights of the Duke and Duchess. So it's something like U.S. taxpayers funding all those football stadiums, right? That's public money. But then the logos and the rights to the game somehow belongs to the private club or team owners. Right? The public pays for William and Kate, their whole family, their lives, the housing, the health care, the food, the outfits. But they own their images and likenesses, right? They alone have the right to exploit them. Exploit them for charity or nah. Those are extravagant outfits, extravagant upkeep, extravagant with the multiple residences and all different parts of the British Empire, the travel, the security. This is not a spendthrift operation, but it is interesting to see the critique of Harry and Meghan who are living on their own steam, not off the public dole. If you're going to be on the dole welfare recipients, then what right do you have to own anything? It belongs to the public. You belong to the public. And if you don't like it, go get a job at Quiznos. And they're back. Here they are. Here we have Harry and Meghan today in Canada. They are in Whistler on Blackcomb Mountain, where this is for the Invictus one year to go. I one year to go events and then here they are well here we have megan meeting some of the competitors for next year's games and don't forget prince harry is the patron of the invictus games he created it so not only is he the patron but he's also the founder so for people who try to rewrite history and say that he's no longer the patron and that he never founded the invictus games he did 
Harry even took part in how to go at the adaptive skiing. And here he is going down. It looks, a lot, looks like it was a lot of fun and they look like they enjoyed themselves. That, and can I just say that I do like this monochromatic look from Megan. I think she looks great. I, I love a good winter white moment. I love it. And then we have the full look here. I think she looks cute. She looks warm. Thank you, Megan, for unzipping your jacket so that we can get like the whole look, the whole view. If you want the tea on where her outfit is, her coat is from Calvin Klein. It's actually on sale right now. If you are interested on the snow boots that she was wearing, it's also on sale right now. However, good luck finding your shoe size because as you can see, it says, hurry, this style is going by fast. Gee, I wonder why it's selling out. But yeah, I can't wait to see what else they do during their time in Canada for these next few days. But yeah, Harry looks good, Megan looks good, and we love to see it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.